Welcome to another weekend here on the platform. My name is Sam Omashe. Welcome to the big talk. My special guest today is a man in a great mood this day. And he's no other than the governor of uh, Nassau State, Tanko Almakura. For the first time, Nassau State delivered the presidency to your party. Uh, Buhari has never won Nassau State. What is going on in your mind right now? Jubilation contentment and a feeling of fulfillment uh, because nobody I mean, not everybody will be that lucky that at the twilight of one's tenor mm. uh, to have all this wonderful thing happening for him uh, the president has won in Nasarawa state and we have met history because that's for the first time since he embarked on his political journey in 2003. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have broken that jinx, like I've always said. Secondly... You also delivered your, the, the governor. Sorry? You delivered the governor. Yes. Uh, secondly, yes. Uh, we delivered the governor to APC. Yes. And what is even most exciting about is that this governor that we have elected is someone that we cherish, someone that we are cocksure that he has the capacity and the capability to move the state to the next level. The third one is that I was privileged, I was lucky to be elected as governor, as a senator. And not only that, but in this dispensation, we have won all the th three senatorial seats to the APC. We cannot ask for more. I must say, this is one of the most exciting moments politically that I've experienced. Yeah, um, the presidential victory uh, was won, but it was such a narrow victory. And some people were saying maybe the areas that were cancelled um, probably will have uh, turned the election here or there. What's your reaction to that? No, victory is victory. By the time you attend victory, the issue of how much you have got or how much you've lost, uh, to me, is immaterial. What is the most fundamental thing is for one to win, even if it's by one vote, because that shows that the preponderance of votes, majority of votes, are won by your candidate. And as far as I'm concerned, in a very dicey environment, very difficult and impossible political environment like Nasarawa, mm. for the president to have won for the first time and with a margin of over 6,000 votes, I think is something impressive. Now, you're talking about uh, the difficult state uh, of Nasarawa. In the eight years, that uh, you have been privileged to, um, to shepherd the state has not been all that uh, easy. There was uh, the Mbatse uh, crisis, which was a militancy problem that really uh, stole the national limelight. Your political foes also wanted to impeach you out of office. And then we also had the herdsman crisis. These three, these three were very, very uh, earth-shaking uh, to, to Nasrawa. Take us through how um, you were able to navigate these um, difficult times. Uh, anytime I think about my political experience in Nasrawa State from 2011 to now, I just get seized by certain feelings of making the impossible possible. And I believe uh, it's not all to one's credit, but I think to a large extent by divine support. Because if you look at the complexity 
or peculiarity of Nassau State, it is one of the most difficult states. Why? Why so? One, because uh, it is a highly heterogeneous state. Yes. Few people know that. A heterogeneous state, both in history, in political disposition, and even social psychology of the people. Because by historical antecedents, the majority of people of Nassau State come from three different kingdoms. One sector from the House of Lani Kingdom, one sector from the Kanem Borno, yeah. and another sector from the Kwarafa. So it's, it's a potpourri, it's, it's a melting point mm. of different cultures, different tendencies. And religions. And, and of course, <laughs> uh, with this background, you mm. should expect uh, heterogeneous leanings uh, to different political persuasion. And not only that, our closeness to the foreign capital has also made the South State become much more difficult state to handle because the influx, the influence of the federal capital territory with all the tribes, all the tendencies in Nigeria mm. over running Nassau State to every nook and cranny, that also helps to uh, complicate the social interaction, the political structure mm. of, of the state. There's always been a problem in Nigerian politics with uh, the successor and the godfather and so on and so forth. How are you guys going to manage your relationship, which is, so, which is very good at the moment? Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think uh, without uh, making a sweeping statement, I would say that uh, what is usually the cause of a conflict between two friends or two like minds is probably when one crosses the line. As far as I'm concerned, I've been opportune to be a governor for eight years. And through divine uh, um, providence. Pr providence, yes. Uh, I've been able to support ASLA and the people of Nassau have been able to support us. As far as I'm concerned, it starts and ends at that. By the time I take my bow as the governor of Nassau State, he is in charge. I would not want to interfere with uh, his focus, his vision, and his commitment to governance. I believe by so doing, he will have an unfettered attention to ensure that his policies manifest, must man manifestos and objectives are fulfilled. Uh, a lot of times when you find two friends or one who has facilitated the emergence of the other uh, goes sour, uh, I think it has to do with interference. And I believe uh, as a statesman, I would rather allow him to do his work and we continue as friends. But as a citizen of Nassau State and one who has occupied the cities occupied, should I see anything that is worthy of uh, comment to him, uh, for him to maybe take a look at, uh, I think I will do it in good faith. Other than that, he is on the saddle. He should be allowed to execute what he believes in uh, to ensure that he uh, achieves his objective uh, for which he has uh, tried to, uh, to, to, to come to, to power to do. Okay. Thank you very much. We have uh, had uh, the <coughs> governor of um, Nasara State and Senator Erect Tanko Amakura. Thank you very much for being on this Thank show. you very much, uh, Mr. Osan uh, Masi. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. I have a special guest today and uh, it's going to be the first governor elect to be interviewed on this show and it's my pleasure to welcome A.A. Sule, the Governor-Elect of Nassau State. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. When the
presidential election results came out and uh, it broke a record that uh, Buhari had never won in this state and he won. But it was a cliffhanger. It was 6,000 votes. How did this feel going into the governorship? Well, uh, first and foremost, we thank uh, God Almighty for giving us the opportunity to even get to yeah. this uh, stage. I think you, look, you have to look at the history of how it all started for Buhari in Nasrallah State. Mm -hmm. Buhari had never won elections since 2003 when he started in Nasrallah State, but gradually he kept improving. In the year 2011, what the CPC won, mm -hmm. uh, Buhari actually got just roughly about 100 and something thousand votes. Mm -hmm. By the time it went to 2015, mm -hmm. when he also lost, you know, he now lost very, very marginally. So it is expected that if it was going to go in that trend of uh, improvement, even if Buhari would win, would win only marginally. You have to understand that Nasrallah State had been historically a PDP state. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people who understand nothing but PDP. And as a result of that, you know, uh, they were looking at it from that uh, direction. So yes, it was by cliffhanger, like you mentioned, but we are glad at least that uh, he won. And it's mm -hmm. historical because uh, a lot of people who were naturally also in PDP had now joined to participate to vote for Buhari. But more importantly, I think uh, the governor had done a wonderful job that people now see, and that's why he had the slogan, seeing is believing. Then also people had seen a lot when it comes to the Buhari administration itself. You know, it has done a lot in the area of security, area of economy, mm -hmm. and all, of course, you know, all the other areas that the mm -hmm. president mentioned they were going to work on. Mm. Now, um, we are in the transition mode now to become governor. Um, how is it like looking, at, looking towards it and also anticipating it at the same time? I have been in different kinds of transitions. Maybe this is the first time I've, I've been in transition of governance. You know, I was in a transition where when we bought a company, we came in as uh, management and we were mm. going to take over from that management and it was mm. a transition period. Mm. So, and I noticed what it means during transition. You have mm. more or less, you know, a period of uh, tense, tense mm. because a lot of things that you were trying to, you were so much in eager, eager to, you know, to understand certain things mm. and people were so eager not to disclose certain things to you. So <laughs> we, I, I, I understand what it means to go through a transition. So in this case, however, it's a little bit different because it's a, an APC uh, governor-elect taking over from a very dominant APC governor, mm. you know, who has also done well. So mm. if he had done the other way around, mm. you know, then the question will have been more investigative mm. during the process. Mm. And this is a question of a governor that has done so well and you are trying as much as possible, in fact, to learn from some of the good things he did so you can learn from and then be able to build on top of that. So that's the kind of transition that we are having. You worked in the U.S., you also schooled in the U.S., you schooled here and schooled in the U.S., and you worked there, and you worked here. Um, you are also known to have done very well in turning African petroleum around from loss to profitability. Some people say that is good resume, but that is not governance in this sense. How do you think you can convert that experience to governance? Because in, in the corporate world, one plus one equals two. In uh, governance, it could be equal, it could be one plus one could be minus Zero. one. Yes, sir. if you mm. look at the history of governance worldwide, mm. you will see where people that have come from, from mm. the private sector had mm. also participated in turning uh, governance around. Mm. Uh, no. No governance is an island, and there is nobody who is coming into a government and thinks that he is going to be the only person turning the entire thing around. In, even in African Petroleum, I didn't turn African Petroleum alone. In Dangote, when we moved Dangote from less than 100 billion to over a hundred and, 250 billion, we didn't turn, I didn't turn it around mm. as an engineer. What we did is that we put a team together. It's a combination of this team that was able to think together focus together, vision together, have a mission together, and work together towards turning the entire system around. And I think it's the same thing that is going to happen to me in governance. 
we had a governor also who came in from the private sector and he was able to do a lot more than those who were dominantly in politics mm -hmm. from what we saw in Nasarawa state. So, and I have my energy from there. I have my aggressiveness from there, mm -hmm. believing that I can also do the same or better, you know, but put, by putting a comprehensive team together that will support with all the ideas, all the vision, you know, so that we can build into one vision. Uh, and be able to turn the company around. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that uh, coming from the private sector will be a disadvantage. In fact, it's the other way around. I strongly believe that coming from the private sector is going to be more advantageous because we are going to reduce inefficiencies, we are going to reduce waste, we are going to encourage productivity, and we are going to reward performance. You know, if we go in that direction, you know, we are going to work towards generating revenue for the state, which the state badly needs, without necessarily impinging on the rights and privileges on any other person. So those are the kinds of areas that we strongly believe that we can work on. What are you going to focus now? You know, the, your predecessor is still in the office, you know, did a lot in terms of infrastructure work and, and, and so on, uh, education and stuff. Um, where are you going to focus? We are going to bring industries. But the number one thing behind those industrialization is actually security in this, in this state. You know, we are focusing more on the areas of security to make sure that people live in peace. People can leave their, their homes to go to their farms, you know, be able to work and come back safely. With that in mind, then we focus on this industrialization. Industrialization doesn't mean building factories doesn't mean bring, coming in to build big industries. Mm. That's not just industrialization. It's a, a complete and comprehensive you know, economic development of the mm. state. The state mm. has a lot of potentials, mm. you know, not only in minerals that it has, but it also in land and the accessibility to the FCT. Mm. Our intention is to focus on that area so that the industrialization we have in mind will mm. create a massive economic uh, activity in the, in the state you know, bring about employment act, uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. But all these so-called minerals we have that are totally in the control of the federal government, so we can jointly make F work together and make effort. And a good example I can give you is the hydrocarbon mm -hmm. presence that we have in Kiana, mm -hmm. which we are already working seriously on. You know, we know that it belongs to the federal government, but we, the state, you know, are going to put a lot of effort to ensure that it materializes. We'll bring up all our ideas because we are very interested in that 13 percent derivation that is going to come from there. Mm -hmm. And we believe those are the areas that are going to create the activity for economic and, and IGR for the state. This state needs a lot of um, um, knitting together in order to, to get a sense of uh, purpose. How are you going to do this? Remember that uh, during, during this uh, tenure, eight year tenure we had in Batsi problem, we had the herdsmen. Uh, uh, crisis and the overflow uh, of privileges of um, uh, internally these IDPs from uh, oh, neighboring states. states and so on, which means that, and then it also there is also the tension increasingly created by the fact that you're close to the FCT and there's also overflow of people from the FCT into Nasra State. So it's making it, it's making increasingly a mini Nigeria when you govern. Um, so how do you now navigate this kind of tension. Our ethnic diversity is our strength. Mm. So, and that's the, that's the approach that I want to do to your second part of the influx of uh, people coming from other states mm. into places mm. like Karu, Kefi, and the rest of that that yes. you mentioned. But when you come out, the first part that you mentioned, you know, about feeling of the sense of belonging. Mm. You know, our governor had made a commitment and a promise, and being the kind of person he is, you know, he was able to meet that commitment. Mm. He said he wanted to practice fairness. You know, which is the, the whole thing about our own political party, the APC. He says since the other zones have already tested power, he wanted to use the opportunity to support somebody from our zone. Well, God so can, and thank you, I, I, I thank the governor and thank everybody who participated, you know, to support that mission that our zone have the opportunity now to produce a governor. So at least that should now dampen the tension that is, uh, that is there, which, which you were trying to refer to. The question of now Umbase and the rest of that that you mentioned, you know, these mm. were issues that are very similar to so many that have come to, especially some of the neighboring states. The Hatsman you mentioned, for mm. instance, 
And I think the government had done its own best to ensure that they were able to contain them in mm -hmm. Nasarawa state. Mm -hmm. So even with the influx of the IDPs that you mentioned, you know, from the neighboring states that we had, it had not actually escalated mm -hmm. to a level beyond control. Okay. So the government was able to contain it mm -hmm. and manage it and being able to ensure that peace and security remain in the state. And that's why in my earlier comment I made, I said that security is actually job one. We want to make sure people are secured, people are united, people understand the purpose of living together and the meaning for living in peace so that mm -hmm. development can come. Mm -hmm. Now the second part you have mentioned about the influx of having today in Karu, there are more foreigners, if you want to put it that yes. way, more non nasarawa state Indians living mm -hmm. in Karu than the nasarawa state Indians living mm -hmm. in Karu. Today there are, and they vote there. And we saw the pattern of voting when it came to that. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a disadvantage? To me, I think no. I think it is an advantage. You know, Nasarawa State is not blessed with a lot of people who have the capacity to build industries, mm -hmm. who have the capacity to do other things. In situations like that, we need the people. That's why America is what it is today. Yeah. America relied on Chinese, American, Japanese, American, German, Americans, Indian, Americans, Afro-Americans, all coming in American, to build Nigeria. America. Nigerian like you, Americans. you were there for years. Nigerian Americans. Mm -hmm. You know, so, well, that's why I say African Americans mm -hmm. in general. You know, these were the people that came together to make America what it mm -hmm. is called Apollo Burroughs Ono. Mm -hmm. You know, because of what it is. Melting and, pot. Yeah, and, and, and nothing that actually mm -hmm. made America what it is. So, mm -hmm. for me, I have the dream that if at all any local government in Nasarawa State will have that type of opportunity, it is Karu that will start. Mm -hmm. And locally, coincidentally, just yesterday, the Ezu Karu, the leader of Karu, came in, and he did a fantastic visit to me. When he was coming, he didn't come alone. He came with all his kinmakers, who are Bagi people. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, he came with all the other kinmakers that for, for other ethnic tribes, you know, the Igbos, the Itsekiris the bodies, the, what all the tribes outside Nasrallah State, he brought them along mm. with him, you know, and they were all seated there with him, and he said, this is Karu family, mm -hmm. and I was very happy, very excited to receive them the way they are. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what uh, the second part is. I went to Mararaba, I went to Masaka mm -hmm. on my own, mm -hmm. and I discovered there are a lot of small industries here and there, soap making factory, water factory here, juice making factory, some mm -hmm. beverages in it, all in small scale, mm -hmm. And 90% of them are not owned by people from Nasarawa State. Yeah. You know, so I don't want to kick these people away. No, mm -hmm. we want to open our arms and welcome these people to come in to help us in developing our state. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can do that is to make them feel at home. Mm -hmm. By them now given the opportunity to be part of that, it will help us to develop our state. Mm -hmm. It will help us to generate the revenue. It will help us to create employment for our people. Mm -hmm. More importantly than anything else, it will help us to train our own people so they can go and get jobs outside Nasarawa State one day mm -hmm. to do what they can. So that's the dream I have. Okay, finally, um, you've spoken glowingly about um, Tanko Amakura and then in the interview with me. You spoke glowing, glowingly about you and uh, about your competence and so on, your resume, pedigree, and so on. Uh, we've seen over this um, republic how tensions have always existed between um, godfather and governor, predecessor and successor, and so on. How are you guys going to make your relationship remain friendly? But you see, the, the, the issue really with me, and I'm, 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 and I'm afraid, and I don't want, to, want it to look negative in any other way, because of my training, because of where I come from, I always try to avoid the word godfatherism because <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to have a godfather in, yeah. in politics or in this and that. I, mm. I really don't. Mm. You know, and if you, there were a lot of people when I just came into Nigeria from the U.S., they say, Atiku Abuka was my godfather. Mm. Later on, they say, oh, Aliku Adongote was my godfather. <laughs> Today, it is likely people will say, oh, Tanko uh, Almokura is my godfather. But if you go to every one of these people, they will talk glowingly about me. Mm. And the reason why they will do that is because I went in there, I did my job as engineer A.A. Sule. Mm. You know, I did my job within the context of what I was supposed to do. Mm. And then after I finished, I left. Mm. You know, and that's exactly the way I intend to approach it also mm. here. Mm. I don't intend to approach it outside it. I think your godfather is the one who will give you money, he will give you power, he will assist things and give to you. That's, so that's the reason, because I've seen the movie, The Godfather. <laughs> yeah. you know, so for me, that's the way I, I, I explain Godfather. I may be wrong, 
you know, and if that's the case, I really don't want to have a godfather in those kind of things. I don't want to have, I don't want to have just because I don't want to be treated like a godson, you know, yeah. where I will be dictated to what, because mm. I have a vision, mm. I have a direction, mm. and I want to be guided. Mm. You know, what the governor has done to me, I will never ever forget because he supported me. He mm. supported me at a time I needed the support very badly. Mm. We had 11 contestants, every one of us eminently qualified mm. to do this. But as a human being, there is no way you can support 11 people. Mm -hmm. You have to pick one and mm -hmm. pick your reason for supporting that. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be me, and I'm forever grateful to him. Mm -hmm. you know, and I believe very strongly that I will continue to do that. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, I think, is the fact that the governor has done a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. you know, if you look at the state, it doesn't matter who you are or what you want to say. Mm -hmm. You must say that he did a good job. Mm -hmm. you know? So you can abuse him, you can call him names, you can do whatever it is that you, you wish to. But you can't take away from him what God has gifted him with. And that is the good work that he has done for Nasrawa State. He changed the landscape of Nasrawa State. Mm -hmm. So is this something I want to throw away because I don't want him to be, to be a good father? No. Any good thing that he did that I believe I can use, I will take it and I will use it. Mm -hmm. Anything that he did so bad that I don't believe in it, I will keep it away. Mm -hmm. I work for the Dangote family and many times I argued with Allah Jaliuko Dangote. Certain things he brought that I didn't like, I refused. Certain times he wanted me to sign certain checks. I refused to sign, mm -hmm. you know, because and, and he knew me as that, and he respected me uh, also for that. So that's the type of st stubbornness that I also have inside me mm -hmm. because of my own training, my own background, and mm -hmm. things like that. But it's not rudeness, you know. It's just that I'm, to a certain extent, an independent person. Mm -hmm. I know where I'm going. I will look for advice. I will look for everything that I can get to do that. Mm -hmm. But not to the extent of just taking whatever is thrown at me. Mm -hmm. I'm not just that kind of guy. Good conversation with A. Sule, Governor elect of Nasarawa State, and I wish you um, a great time ahead as uh, the Chief Shepherd of the state. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for watching us on this show. You can uh, catch up with my published column on www.samomashae.com. Also follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Samomashe. Uh, until next time, be good. Be good. <laughs>